the great basketball fans of Chicago have been rewarded by a great basketball team, the 1991 NBA world champion, Chicago Bulls. As a member of this team and an organization in the city of Chicago for seven years, it brings me great joy to say we are the world champions. Thank you. It's like the guy on the King of the Hill situation. Once you're on top of the hill, you want to defend it. We played that season, we played last season as though no matter what we encounter, we're still going to finish the season on top. To Michael, yeah, and a, and a way to start the season. As I was growing up, when we was playing against the Celtics, the Celtics would come in and, you know, they knew they was going to beat us no matter how we start the game. They just knew we were going to fold and they wouldn't come back and beat us. You know, Kevin McKay would, you know, would talk more trash than anybody have ever seen, and Bird as well. But they knew they were going to win. And I think we had that same attitude. Jordan, a running conversation with Stacey Ottman hits for the... When you trash talk, yeah, that's a game. It's, it's a game of uh, psyche now. They're talking to Michael right now. You love to see it. He hit the shot on you, and then he tells you about it. Jordan and Starks chatting with each other. They try to take it as a one-on-one -on -one competition to me which totally takes away from their team concept. The one thing, when you play against Michael Jordan, you not only have to stand up to him physically, you have to stand up to him mentally, because he will torment you. I know how to play the game. I don't think they know how to play the game when I'm talking to him. Looks for something to get him in this kind of frame of mind. Just like that, in your face. See, he looks for an edge. He wants Starks to come back at him. And no matter what trash you talk, we're going to talk the most trash, and we're going to back it up. Let's watch Jordan. I think he's talking to uh, Matumbo. I told him I was going to shoot this with my eyes closed. Nah, you won't do it, you won't do it. But he never know, now I've done this before. As you know, I closed my eyes and shot it and made it. And I told him, welcome to the NBA. And moved on. At this point, it has been strictly a celebration of the Chicago Bulls. It shocked me. I thought it was a joke. I thought he was just kidding around. He was just playing with me. And I said, you serious? He said, yep. Irving's going to retire today. I said, yeah, you're kidding. And Irving's going to retire from what? Because of the, the HIV virus that I have attained, uh, I will have to retire from the Lakers uh, today. Yo, he and I was just establishing a great relationship after the first three or four rocky years. I just want to say that uh, I'm going to miss playing. I, I didn't really get the opportunity to play basketball against him like I wanted to because he was my driving force. You know, he, Magic Johnson was here, he and Larry Bird was here. I was still here. And for me to get here, I had to beat these guys. And I felt I was being cheated. That, you know, he was, he was getting away from the game when, when I needed him the most. I made sure that I called Larry, Michael, Isaiah, the guys who I'm close with. You know, I don't know what to say, you know, but I'm with you, I love you, I want you to want what's best for you, and I'm willing to follow your footsteps. What, what should I do? Tell me. Doesn't matter who you are or what you do, age is everybody's problem. Magic has given all of us a great responsibility. Let's not let him down. Get the facts. Now that Maddox retired, you're kind of the ambassador of the NBA now. Is there a lot of pressure on you these days? You start to think about different things that could happen to you that, hey, you may have to call a press conference and, you know, at some point in time and explain yourself. Back here at home, everybody's buzzing about the soon-to-be-released book on the Bulls, The Jordan Rule. The book, Jordan Rules, will be released soon, and some of its passages have already created a stir. A forthcoming book on the championship season of last year portrays a selfish Jordan who told his teammates not to pass the ball into center Bill Cartwright late in the game. I think we're, everybody saw what was in the paper today. Uh... But uh, somebody said, never believe what you read the papers. And in fact, it alleges Jordan was kind of a tough guy with some of his teammates. Jordan denies the book's accounts. If I'm going to be knocked off this pedestal, I'm going to make sure I do something. I do something to be knocked off. I'm not going to let someone else knock me off for no, no apparent reason or you know, comments that I didn't say.
players giving out sensitive information to the press is one surefire way to cause a division within the team. It figures to be a bumpy ride as the Bulls try to defend their NBA championship. We never, we never talked about it. You know, we knew the truth of this team and, and what relationships we had on this team. No matter what the book illustrated, if anything, it brought us closer together uh, to keep what's, what happens between these 12 players or 15 people within us instead of letting people get inside that circle. So it bonded us and we focused more on playing basketball. What time is it? Great play! Michael, Tong is out. Spin move. Nice pass inside. Michael, cross court for two! Michael and a bullet pass! Cut the Bulls again. Michael, bounce pass! Yes, he dropped it back! Scotty, that's the nail, baby. That's the nail. Michael, you know, he, he really took matters in his own, own hands out there at the stretch of the game. And Rakowski tosses the inbound pass, and he's there with the steal. On the run. Got packs and Pippen. Packs. Got it. Bulls are going to get the win, and the fans love it. Whenever uh, uh, it's time for Michael to take over a game, you know, he takes it over. Michael high for the rebound. Can he save it? He does! He does! What really happened with this team was we accepted a challenge. And I think that was a part of the maturity of this team. But for Michael Jordan, uh, the complexity of, of my life has changed. I mean, I worked for so many years to get to a point where I like to think that I'm one of the best. And now uh, everything, every move, every shot, everything is in the spotlight. I mean, you're, you're a target now. I'm a target now. We've all heard about the rewards of being you. How hard is it to be you? Into Michael, running one hand. Oh, yes! You were zone, Michael, and were you just really feeling it? Jordan, a lot of fakes and the scoop shot for two. What a play. Turn, turn toward me a little bit more, just like that. Thank you. Put the ball under your, your uh, right foot, please. Once again, he's the man, Michael Jordan, today named Sports Illustrated's Man of the Year. And SI celebrated their selection with a special hologram cover. You can have Michael's head rotating on your coffee table. It's amazing. Anytime people talk about you in a positive way, it's, it's great to, to hear those comments. You know, my first five, six years, I really enjoyed it. It was something to be happy about. But I'm at a stage in my career, in my life, that I wouldn't mind if it, you know, people pass me by and don't say a word. That wouldn't bother me one bit. The Chicago Bulls win their 13th game in a row. That puts Chicago at 36 and 5, the best first half record in NBA history. The red hot Chicago Bulls on pace to become the winningest team in NBA history. And now the focus for the regular season clearly becomes beating the Lakers 20 year old record of 69 wins in a season. We basically just been saying, hey, let's collect the wins, let's keep it going. And that's how we're going to do it from here on in. You know, if we get 70 wins this way, great. You guys can leave us alone for the next year. <laughs> and the media was making such a big hype out of it that it was tough to do, tough to think about anything but 70 games. The Bulls are now ready to embark on their last long road trip of the season. When the Bulls return, we'll have a pretty good idea if the Bulls have a legitimate shot at the Lakers' record for victories in one season. And the Spurs have ended the Chicago have won the game. Chicago loses its second straight game in Texas. Right now, Chicago is in disarray. The Bulls, hope for winning 70, are starting to slip away. The Chicago Bulls locking up in a game to remember with the Utah Jazz. Tight one all the way. Looking. There's Jordan. They got it. Bill Reyes, he's alone. He misses. They go to overtime. Through one overtime, then two. Six, five, four. Jordan. Jordan. Two seconds, Jordan. No going. 
We go to overtime, our third overtime. And again, Michael Jordan comes up short. And into a third. Third mid court, three seconds. Jeff challenges Michael Jordan. Foul Jordan. Foul Michael Jordan. I lost it. I totally lost it. Michael Jordan. Come on. Michael Jordan. He's got it. He's got it. Jordan's out of here. I throw him out of the game. Michael Jordan is gone. I was in a rage. You should have saw me in the locker room. I kicked chairs in. I you know, I, mean, I broke the blackboard. I mean, this is the first time that I've ever lost it in a competition. Well, it seems Michael Jordan isn't perfect after all. The NBA's marquee name was suspended for tonight's game and fined $5,000 by the league. Jordan didn't appeal the penalties and left saying he'll see you in Orlando on All-Star Weekend. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the 42nd Annual NBA All-Star Game. There has been plenty of magic here in Orlando. Magic Johnson, that is. Three months ago, he announced his retirement from the NBA, but he was voted by the fans as one of the starting guards for the Western Conference Stars. I respect him so much, and I'm happy to get the opportunity to spend time with him again. And I felt that you know, this was his opportunity to come back and shine. I just want to be behind the scenes and let him stand forward, let him stand in front of the camera. Oh, now it's Jordan against Magic. The crowd on its feet. I just wanted him to get the, the enjoyment of being back and playing again amongst the guys. <laughs> Michael said, you're not getting it. Yes, he is. But when you're great, you deliver on cue. Three straight trays for Johnson at the end of the game. Three-pointer. Yes! Oh, my! Gentlemen, you just can't orchestrate it better than that. It was great timing. You know, it's like, God, okay, you had enough beating. Now here goes something positive for you to follow. And then, as you know, uh, it, it, it carried me for a while. Jordan. What a play! What a play! After the All-Star break, it was pretty obvious that we weren't going to win 70 games. And for the team, things pretty much got back to normal. The Bulls are back to their winning ways. But for me, it wasn't going to be that easy. Well, it appears to err is human, even when that human in question is Michael Jordan. The NBA has investigated reports concerning Jordan's alleged gambling on golf. No one likes to be susceptible uh, to that, that circumstance to where people out, out of the blue give criticism to, to, towards you and say, hey, look at him, look at this guy. We thought he was perfect and yet, you know, he, look at him, he's, he's, he's made a mistake. No one's perfect, even Michael Jordan, you or anybody else. I think, uh, I think that the, the, the lesson that comes from this is that you know, when you make a mistake, you gotta stand up and accept it and you know, move on. That was one of the things that happened to me through a very trying year of my career. But as I said, with any adversity, I, if I can accept you know, good things that happen to me. I can certainly deal with the bad and move straight forward. The conclusion of that investigation, the league will take no disciplinary action against Michael Jordan. Uh, he met with Commissioner David Stern and several other league officials, and following the meeting in New York, Mike and company laced him up and met the New York Knicks at the Garden. You know, if I have any problems away from the basketball court, when I play basketball, when I'm out there playing, I got a solution for that. You know, so it's like my uh, psychologist or whatever. And if you ever take that away from me, I, I wouldn't know what to do. Chicago 
Dallas Stadium the site tonight as the Bulls begin defense of their NBA championship. This is the biggest focus of the season is the playoffs. All right. Okay. And welcome to the excitement of NBA playoff basketball. Showtime. Here's Jordan. Wow! Jordan with Edwards on him. Oh, Jordan will hammer. Oh, hammer it is. Jordan drives again. Oh, my goal, Jordan. Edwards drives it against Jordan. Michael knocks it away and gets it right back. He's got Livingston in his right, Horace Grant in his left. Goes inside. Oh, classic Jordan. The Chicago Bulls have defeated the Miami Heat in three straight games. It was a tailor-made final. This is a series everybody has been waiting for with bated breath for two years. Portland was going to play against Chicago. The world, the country, wants to see Portland versus Chicago. And then it became individual competition. Jordan against Drexler. Clyde against Michael. See, this is what Michael lived for. He, he wanted this challenge, showing Clyde, not only Clyde, but the world that, hey, I am the greatest, I am the best in the world. This is the inner thought that I had. This is my motivation. And that's not to get Clyde mad at me if he ever sees this video, but when the game and when the ball is thrown up, it's going to be a differential between the two of us. And I'm going to let you choose which is which. Michael, sideline, he runs right by him. Stop, fires, come on! Jordan Looney Robinson, yes! Jordan posting up, goes to the fadeaway, through the fire. I was in a groove, I was in a rhythm that I can't really explain. Blazers get back, Pippen back for Jordan for three. I started hitting threes like they were free throws. There's Pippen, setting up Jordan, one over again. The rim seems like a big old huge bucket. Back to Michael, Pippen fires the three, and he's out of it. unbelievable. And I can't miss it. Come Michael, three again. After a while, I just looked at Marvin and, and, and Magic and those guys. What can I say? I mean, it's not me. It's just the, just a moment. This is the greatest performance maybe ever in the history of this league. I'm a very competitive person. I mean, um, I hate to lose. Uh, I compete at practically everything, and, and competition is everything to me. The Trailblazers win game four and tie this series at two games apiece. When you lose, you know, you're easily forgotten, and, and I don't think anyone want to go to their grades forgotten. And the defending world champions are one victory away from making it two NBA titles in a row. To compete, to, to win, um, it's all I live for, really. Game six, a 3-2 Bulls lead in the series. This is the 104th game of the year for the Bulls. That's a long haul, and it, it could all end here this afternoon.
Jordan with a rebound. Almost traveled to the backboard. Cross court pass stolen by Ford. Jordan. Double pumps. Wheels missed the wide open layup. Reached out to push him. Jordan drives to the basket. Double pumps. Lays it up short. No oh, good ball. Knocked out of bounds by Michael. And Michael Jordan is tired. He's a tired player. I was a little tired and Phil knew I was a little tired and uh... He put me over and he said, well, let's see what happens with this second team. Pippen out front, starts a move on Duckworth, jump pass left side, B.J. in the left corner, Hanson fires a three and score! Next thing you know, I'm on the sideline, I'm watching this. I'm like them, you know, when I'm playing. Now the Pippen backs in on Drexler, turns, double, triple team, spins through it and lays it in! The lead is down to five! All I wanted was a second chance because, you know, all up to that point, I was playing like, like the dog. And then I started looking at Phil like, okay, I'm ready now, this is... This could be the time. Put me back in. And Jordan re-enters the fray. It'll be Jordan against Drexler. Foot fake. Starts to move. Beats Clyde inside. Looks up a floater and scores! Oh, that was an un unbelievable shot. Out of Jordan. Jordan wants to go one-on-one -on, -one on Drexler. Fakes left. Dribbles right. Hang. Shoots. Scores! We're tied at 87. And Jordan knocked it away. And jams it. And the ball takes the lead. Superman is back in the building. No matter what people said about me during the course of the year, what negative things happened to me, it never affected us as a team. We kept focusing, kept moving towards that, that ultimate goal is to win a championship. The full have repeated. Let the party begin. And we did it back to back, and this year we did it in Chicago, so we wanted to celebrate with Chicago. And we're told they are bringing the championship trophy to the floor. Chicago Stadium is going wild, as you can imagine. I've never seen Michael like this up on the scores table. You like Mike? Ah. Uh, Want to be like him? We play golf every day. If, if Chuck Daly played me over ten minutes, I'm quitting. With all these stars on the team, if it comes down to the last shot, who's gonna take the shot? Me. Me. <laughs> <laughs> I remember when I first got there, and Chuck Daly said, well, do you want to be team captain? We got Larry and we got Magic. Do you want to be the third team captain? I said, no. I'm the young guy with the old elder <laughs> state. This is their first Olympics. I've been there. Uh, they're a little bit older than I am. He's a young puppy, and the rest of them are young puppies. I'm the big dog here. And that's a heck of a responsibility to try to keep all these egos in one big bag. You can't get too close to Michael, it's a file. <laughs> you haven't committed a foul in almost a year and a half, man. How can you talk? <laughs> My goodness. I don't think you ever found out of a game. When do you ever found out of a game? <laughs> so I kind of stepped to the back and just rode along with the, for the ride. Big smile. That's perfect. Ooh, la, la. Well, the all-time best was Monte Carlo. We went to Monte Carlo for practice, but we had some time for relaxation as well. And for me, that means one thing. Hold up, Doc. I got the coat. That means we get to go first. Well, I went up with you know, Chuck Daly and Rod Thorne and all those guys who went up and played. Are you a Chicago Bulls fan? Then you're not going to hit that straight. I mean, it was beautiful up there. Yep. Hit a tree. Oh, came back. They didn't have carts. <laughs> you had to walk up and down the hills, which, you know, sometimes was very difficult, but it was an escape. Okay. Turn. Get off the field. I played like a pig. Mike played pretty well. I had to get too many strokes. Well, I'm down 2-0 to uh, Rod, even with Chuck down two to PJ, so I'm losing. They want strokes left and right, and now I'm dying over it. And you guys get the hell out of here, maybe we can play some golf. Don't that sound like Bobby Knight? 
one of the reasons that I, I went to the Olympics was to see how everybody practiced, see if they took practice as serious as, as games. Every practice was really intense. One team will win first half of practice, which motivates the second team to come back and win the second half of practice. Charles, how you like that ass kicking we gave you? Oh, no, no, no. Come on, man. I don't think y'all caught up with it. Oh, yeah, crazy. Whole, whole second half of practice. Tell him. The whole Tell him, DR. We maybe came down here once or twice. Oh, please. There was a lot of trash talking. And with Magic running the point guard, and he's trying to show everybody he's back, and his mouth starts running, and then everything starts to go. Barkley starts talking, Clyde starts talking, even Magic and myself, we started talking. And I got five championship rings, this is what we used to do, and blah, blah, blah. And my rebuttal to that was, it's a new kid in town now, you retire, you want to come back, but if you come back, this is the treatment that you're going to get. No matter what happened in the games, nothing could equal what we were going through in Monte Carlo. And uh, that was the best fight. It's a little bit more of a spectacle than I thought in dream of. Police escorts everywhere. Helicopters following us. Sometimes it, you know, we come out going to a game, you got 2,000 people lining down you know, towards the hotel on our way to a game. We were the, the, the highlight of the Olympics. The dream team, everybody wanted to see us. They wanted to see us drive by, walk by, whatever. They just wanted to see what's been talked about and promoted so long. So we wanted to get out there and prove to everyone that the team that they sent over there was, was going to go over and do the job and you know, accomplish the feat. We were like 12 playing esports. We were out there to do a job. Yeah, we shake hands and take pictures with you early, but when the ball goes up, you know, that's it. It wasn't the challenge of winning. It was just a matter of how many points we would win by and how much we would dominate. There's no tension, there's, there's no pressure. I just get up and play golf and play basketball and have a good time. Get the chance to know some of these guys on this team. Come on, man, what's your bowling ball here? Uh, hey, that was a good joke. Did you do that too? I did. That was pretty good, I'm good. I remember one night we stayed up to about 3 or 4 o'clock. It was myself, Larry, and Magic. And we just started talking about past games, past times. And we'd do it for almost four or five hours, you know. And I really enjoyed it. And I saw more of the human side of both of them. And this is exactly one of the reasons that I wanted to be a part of the team, was to get to know these guys away from the game. Sometimes I dream that he is me. I just want to be like Chuck. I mean, my shit. Charles is probably one of my best friends in the league. In this spot, Mom? And a lot of people say, why? Hey, let's go, Charles. Okay, let's go, man. Let's go. Okay. A lot of people felt, well, he was an ugly American because he looked so physical and so dominant. In some ways, that's the way Americans are sometimes when, we, when we're going against other countries. We got so much pride, we want to dominate. 29 unanswered points. So this group may well be the greatest team ever assembled in the history of team sports. We position ourselves for the medals, and, and now it's a matter of just going out there and, and doing it. It is, what, 6.30, 6 quarter, quarter seven, something like that. I'm drinking coffee. Can we go now? What's all these lights? Is this it right here? There's a lot of pressure put on us. And every day we deal with pressure in our profession. Where are you from? Albuquerque. Albuquerque, New Mexico. Big fan of yours. Big fan of yours. <laughs> a lot of expectations and a lot of different encounters or whatever. Last night I hit my wall. Did you? I couldn't make a basket. What are you doing up so early? It's been a long, long season. I mean, it was almost 11-month season for me. And uh, mentally, I was strained. But, uh, you know, this is a once-in-a-lifetime thing with the Dream Team, so it was something that was easily accepted by everybody. Olympic Stadium, imagine, all the greatest athletes ever. To 
go out there and walk through it. And I got to see the, the circumstances that they had to deal with and the pressures that probably they felt walking on that field. What about Edwin Moses? 122 consecutive races. Bob Beeman jumping 29 feet. I don't know if I could have participated in that atmosphere. With me, it's a team thing, but from an individual standpoint, it's no team, it's just you against the best in the world. That's a heck of a pressure to deal with. Not too many people get the opportunity to be in the Olympics. Just happy I was one of them. I know a lot of people love to have a gold medal. I think everybody's got something to cherish. I think this is something that my kids are gonna love one day. The big thing about it was I represented my country with pride. And the United States now leads by 50. From this time to we all are dead and gone, it would never be that type of a talent at, at one particular time on, on the basketball court. That 92 team of 11 professionals and one college player would never be duplicated again. I think that's what makes the dream team so special because it is a once in a lifetime situation. Whoever saw that team participate or play saw our history. Let's see all those Jordan guys. Come on, boys. I was ready to go home. My family's my stability. And all before I got married and had my family, the public and the media got 95% of my time. Uh, now it's reversed. And uh, they helped me through tough situations when, you know, I, I don't have too many people to talk to. I can always talk to my family. For the next page. Right. Again, Catwoman whips cracks. Where's the cracks? Cracks. She reaches through. Parents could be better role models than any athlete could ever be. See, when I was a kid, I never really had a hero. My closest hero was my father. I think a lot of things have been made of, uh, of uh, myself being a role model. Everyone's given up you know, their, their day and their evening to help raise money for the Michael Jordan Foundation, which is a foundation that tries to benefit less fortunate kids and youth around the world. They like to uh, you know, see kids smile and, and do things uh, so that in some ways they can follow. But uh, I think earlier in my career, I tried to live like everyone wanted me to live, the purest of all people. There's no such thing. And I think that was evident and that was shown through the course of this year. That's why I wouldn't change anything over the course of this year because all of it's been a learning process for me. Um, from the book to the gambling to all the different positive things that's happened to me over the course of, of one year, I wouldn't change because I think it's made me a better person. There's a couple things I want to say, though, about the ring ceremony. Of course, it's a celebration. It's a celebration of a, of a ring, and it's a celebration of last year's championship. But for us, it's a celebration of playing together. It's the last time that you can celebrate what happened the previous year. It's the last little bit of joy and, and fun and, and excitement. Good, black man. How you feeling, man? Good, good. Take it easy. Yeah, man. You walk up get to the floor and the crowd shows you their respect, they pay you their respects for what you accomplished last year and what you're about to accomplish this year. Well, once again, I want to say thanks. It's been uh, eight years going into my ninth year and we got two championships and uh, hopefully we got a lot left. You carry those memories with you forever, but now it's a sense of motivation that, okay, we got to get another one. You got to do this again. To Jordan, time winding down, Michael for three. Yeah! Yeah! A winner! Unbelievable! Oh, yes, here comes Mike Pitt! Oh, what a play! We said he was on the runway. Pippen gets it to Jordan. Michael challenges and slams. 
you got the younger guys coming from college, you always feel you got something to prove. But those guys coming in with the hype, you know, with the name, with the big money. O'Neal on offensive rebound, bangs free, Jordan LeBlanc and the steal. Oh, what a play. Number one, number two draft picks or whatever. Uh, the potential of changing the league or dominating the league. Edwards for Miner. Jordan with a reject. Welcome to the NBA, rookie. It's not going to be as easy as you think, you know, and I'm here to say that it won't be. This is to Jordan. attention yes it will Danny. that's enough to keep coming back you know uh, success is, is enough to keep coming back the world champs beginning their quest to three feet this evening as they open a best of five series against atlanta He goes for three. He drains it, Michael Jordan. What a performance in this series. And that puts the period on the full sweep of the Hawks and the end of the season for Atlanta. They've been swept. Well, if it's May in Chicago, it must mean that the Bulls and Cavs are about set to go in yet another seven-game playoff war. I love Cleveland. I love playing against Cleveland. And uh, for some reason, I have a very confident notion in the back of my head against Cleveland. And that confidence is always going to be there because of the past success that I've had. Cleveland, in the offseason, brought in Gerald Wilkins to be the Jordan stopper. I'm looking forward to it, no question about it. Um, I think the number one thing is that it's my job to go out and put the job on him to shut him down, keep his numbers down. Jordan moves in. Pippen on top as Jordan's trying to post up. Oh, Michael with a beautiful fake. Oh, man. What a fake by Jordan. Trying to go inside. Michael spins. It's good. Oh, yeah. What a shot by Michael. Michael is talking to the crowd. And Michael looked over at us and said, he can't guard me. He can't guard me. So much for Gerald. And I'm going to shut Michael down. The Jordan stopped ahead of tough time tonight. Uh, he's going to be ready to come back the next uh, next game, but so am I. Now, did you look at this Chicago defense. The double team of Grant and Jordan to steal. B.J. Armstrong, Jordan. Laying in the foul. A standing ovation. Michael Jordan with a spectacular move. Chicago Bulls aiming for a four-game sweep. Cavaliers of the Bulls dead even at 101. 18 and a half seconds left. Here we are in Cleveland again. You know, same scenario in a sense. The inbounds pass comes into Jordan. Here's Michael at the foul line. A shot on Elo. Good! The Bulls win! They win! Set the Cleveland down! I thrive on situations like that. I can't think of another moment in the game of basketball that I get more thrills out of than taking a game winning shot. Stump to Michael. Six, five, Four, Michael Strip got it back. Three, two, Michael falls, fires. Yeah! Oh, does it again! Michael right over Wilkins and in his face. And the Bulls have swept the Cleveland Cavaliers. You know, Jordan Root. You know, that's just bottom line. You know, that was a great shot by a great player at the right time. You know, and only he can make that shot. Of the Eastern Conference Final, matching the New York Knicks and Chicago Bulls, and the anticipation has been building for a better part of a year. We understand that in order for us to get into a championship, that we have to go through <laughs> Chicago, and uh, we understand come Sunday it's going to be all out war. Uh, we knew New York would, would take us to our limit, so it was a mental test as well as a physical test to take on the baddest and the worst and probably the best challenge that we would have in the playoffs. John Stark squeezed Jordan very well. Oh, 
is he reads MJ real well. He has studied films on Michael Jordan because he's playing him better than I've ever seen anybody play him. Jordan high on the right side. Turns, there's a quick jumper. And he put it away. <laughs> the Knicks are flat out playing Chicago at both ends right now. Stark dribbling out front on the right side. Stark goes baseline. Woo! And boom! Oh, my goodness! Oh, my goodness! Oh, what a play by Stark! <laughs> Stark with the spark. That play should just about finish off the move. It's a great challenge. You know, we are, we're down two. Somehow we have to go back and get one. One at a time. We can't win two in one game. Go back home, get that home cooking, and hopefully we can get even this thing back up. The Bulls have come back from one down, but have never had to come back in their two-year dominance, trailing two games to none in a series. This is an opportunity to kind of, you know, to regather the momentum a little bit and, and catch a team that's probably overconfident and put them back on the heels once again. So we came out and we were clicking. Bulls have come out on fire. A gorgeous pass from Jordan. And it's blocked by Jordan for a play. Michael Jordan, the hustle back. Hippen now drives to the basket. Changes, put it up and in with a bank shot. Running in with the left side with the right hand. Michael firing over and scores! Michael knocked to the deck, knocked it down for three. Jordan, tongue dangling, bang, pop, score! He just looks like he might be unstoppable. Return back, fires another three. Why not? He's unconscious today. 54 points for Jordan. The Chicago Bulls have managed to bounce back with the two victories at home. Once we won, won the two games here in Chicago, there was no doubt in our mind we couldn't beat this team. So we gained confidence in that situation, and we went on to dominate the, you know, the series. On the wing, Michael with a dribble against Rivers. Michael down the lane, a fake, hangs, fires, scores! Michael Jordan fighting it home. Jordan runs in between Rivers and Stark. Space line, great speed. Reverse left by Grant, calls in, and he's fouled. Man, oh man, oh man. And it is Chicago going on to the NBA Finals. Chicago will attempt to three-peat. Welcome to the NBA Finals. In the case of the Chicago Bulls, it's welcome back. They seek, as you know, to become only the third team to win three NBA championships in succession. Chicago Bulls take game one of this best of seven. But one game don't make a series. And you know that they're very capable of uh, making adjustments and coming back. So I really feel that you know, we just take this game, pile it in with the rest, and then go for another. Phoenix Suns become the first team to lose games one and two at home. And the Bulls are going to head back to the Windy City with two in hand. The Suns looking down a real dark road right now. Well, this is what they mean when you say your back is against the wall. I think we're in that situation. We got to, obviously, we got to win the next game. Team resists the wide open shot, and Stacey King threw it right to Barkley, who lays it in. Oh, that might be the backbreaker. Phoenix Suns in triple overtime have defeated the Chicago Bulls to battle their way back into this series. Well, it's just so much fun to be out there. It's a big game. Uh, everybody Man, loves to be Michael out there. Michael Jordan shot the ball 43 times. <laughs> Damn. That's unbelievable. There's a feeling that the battle has been joined, that the Phoenix Suns did more than restore their pride on Sunday, that they made it a series again. And now it's the Bulls' turn to respond to a challenge. The instinct that, that I have is like an um, assassin, a quiet assassin. When you least expect it, I sneak up and I got you. MJ the other one. Michael down the lane. Double pumping and scoring. He took it right at the big man. Oh. Michael crosses over once, twice. Hangs in the air. Jumper go. He has all 14 Chicago points here in the second period. Now to Jordan. Quickly by Taylor. Marley. And he slams it home. He has 31 in the first half. He blew right by Marley, knocking his doors off. Michael has been unstoppable here today. Right to Michael Jordan. Wheels, scores! Michael Jordan, very confident, shooting the ball. Well, the Bulls, Tommy, have 99. MJ has 49. Crossover ball for Jordan, and finishes with the free throw. Michael has been up in. 10 seconds. 
to go with the shot clock. 15 in the ball game. Michael will take it. He's fouled. He scores. He threw it up. Off the and it in. Oh, my Michael with his fifth play near midpoint. I tell you, he's just simply amazing. He does whatever he has to do to beat you. She said after practice yesterday, he's the guy you got to stop. I we didn't say we had to stop him. We cannot stop him. I never said we had to stop him. Oh, we can't stop focus him. On Nobody him. can stop him. There's no doubt about it. This is the night the Bulls are going to make it three NBA titles in a row. Stop I would be lying if I said we were not disappointed because we could not accomplish the ultimate goal here in Chicago. Apparently the Bulls thought they would never be back here in Phoenix. But the Chicago Bulls are in trouble. They're in trouble. Everybody better hold on. Jordan pitched it back out. Cartwright able to get back to it. Goes down. Johnson with the steal. Three on one. Marley from Barkley. Counts in Sons coming at the Bulls. Jordan, yes, Michael Jordan answers. Rebound West, rebound The Suns and the ball are tied. Michael against Kevin Johnson, fakes him, fires from outside, scores again. But Michael time. He looks for the chance to take the lead. Get the ball for a three. It was a matter of leadership. From my standpoint, the do or die, my back is to the wall, our backs are to the wall. If we're going to die, we're going to die with no bullets in our holsters. You know, we're going to shoot them all out and just lay it all on the basketball court. The Suns sensing that they have the Bulls on the ropes. It's going to be seven games. This is going to be seven games. 98 94. Suns play four, they have the basketball. Run to the lane, kicks it out back to Frank Johnson, open for a leader. 18 footer, no. Rebound, Jordan. 43 seconds to go on the game. MJ pushes it the other way. Here comes Jordan all the way to the basket, leads it up and in from coast to coast. Now it's a two point game, 98 96. I thrive on situations like that, and uh, I would hope that all my teammates would have the same type of feelings. It's Chicago's game to win or lose. They put 14.1 seconds up. Suns lead by two. They're going to put the ball in Michael Jordan's hands. You got Michael. You keep him out of the middle. They want Michael to get a full head of steam, try to keep him in the middle of the floor. Michael, 11 seconds. Across the timeline, he comes, goes to Pippen. Pippen breaks inside. Well, Pippen got the start. They go to Grant. The Paxson. Paxson going for the win. Here's Paxson for three. Paxson. Yes! 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 The three. Yes! The Bulls take a one-point lead. Paxson nails a three. That's the first score by anybody other than Michael Jordan in the entire fourth quarter. It's all over for Chicago Bulls. For the third year, Michael Jordan and the Chicago Bulls have climbed the Mount Olympus of the NBA to the world champions of basketball. It was a lot harder than anything that I've ever done before in the game of basketball. But when you become a part of it, you cherish it. When, when my kids get bigger and other people have their kids and we remember this day, and you know that's going to bring a proud smile to anybody's face. Did you watch the game? Who won? Chicago Bulls. Who made the last shot? John Paxson. <laughs> All right, let me speak to Mama. <laughs>